Ho-Chunk can show you what they are doing in our community right now. Right now. They're part of our good neighbors, our partners. They have been and they will continue to be good neighbors or partners. When I have a neighbor that has a job, I'm better off. When my neighbor does well, I'm better off again. I can personally look out my windows and see the Ho-Chunk name atop, a car, atop our most prominent building downtown. And that's a fact. I own a condo just down the street. And so I can truly look out my window and see that sign. This is a powerful symbol that speaks to Ho-Chunk's commitment to Siouxland and their plan to remain a fixture and a good neighbor to all of us. It's simple for me what the selection should be. Pick the Warrior Project, but that's the hard choice that you have to make. We're here and cannot deny the fact that we want all the benefits for our people in this area. All the jobs, all the revenue, we'd like to see it stay right here. Dollars to spend on bringing the warrior back to its glory is something we can all agree on as a community. That's what part of this project means, keeping the revenue, the jobs, and the community revitalization right here. And it's truly the only unique difference between these three proposals. We're not talking about good proposals as opposed to bad proposals. We're talking about three proposals in which only one of them keeps all of the revenue right here and revitalizes our community. Our revenue should be in our banks, businesses we walk into every day and where we greet our neighbors. Tribal Chair John Blackhop, CEO Lance Morgan, their ancestors and families have been here longer than any of the rest of us. The Warrior Casino Project builds on our being good neighbors. Select the Warrior Project, please. Thank you for all your hard work. Hi, my name is Tal Kavarna, K-O-V-A-R-N-A. And I'd like to thank the Commission for allowing me to express my enthusiastic support for the Warrior Casino Project. I'm a lifelong Siouxland resident with the exception of spending five years at Iowa State University in Ames. And I chose to come back to this area to work and to live. I really love this area. The biggest reason why I support the Warrior Project is because of the historic reservation of both buildings, the Warrior Hotel and the Davidson Building. I commend the developers for their use of both buildings and the fact that they are going to use most of the square footage of both buildings in their plans. It's a national trend to restore buildings to their former grandeur and has been proven to boost economic development and increase tourism. All over the country, communities are saving buildings for reuse as hotels, office buildings, and other uses. One of the examples right now is the federal building in um, Omaha that's being converted into a hotel. And we have great examples of um, historical development here in Sioux City. Beautiful Orpheum Theater, um, the Central High School into apartments, the United Building into offices and condos, and even the State Steel Building um, into corporate offices. The, I apologize, sorry, I'm not a public speaker. In fact, public speaking is, um, just scares the daylights out of me, but <laughs> this project is so important for the, for the future of downtown Sioux City and, uh, and for our history. It's a really exciting time for Sioux City and the Siouxland region, and the Warrior Project will certainly kick off an eco economic development storm that would transform Sioux City and downtown Sioux City. It's been really exciting to learn about Ho-Chunk and their business philosophy for economic development, and I'm sure they would do this project justice. Restoring the beautiful Art Deco Warrior and the Grand Davidson Building would be a fantastic benefit to the community of Sioux City. I ask you to award Warrior Entertainment the license for Woodbury County, and thank you again for your time. Thank you for coming to Siouxland today. I really appreciate that. My name is Skip Perley, P-E-R-L-E-Y. I'm in the electrical construction business here in Siouxland as well as Sioux Falls in Omaha. These are all great projects. Um, I have the pleasure of knowing most of the people involved in all of them, and I would call most of them my friends. Um, I'm here today to make a couple of points about the Ho-Chunk proposal. We have known Ho-Chunk for a long time, and there has been some question in the community the last several months as to whether we believe Ho-Chunk can pull this off. I can share with you that every project that I've been involved in with Ho-Chunk 
when they set their mind to doing something, they will make it happen. I have no concern at all that they can make this happen. The second point I'd like to make is that I believe of all the proposals, the Ho-Chunk Warrior proposal has the ability to do provide the most impact for the broad area of downtown Sioux City, uh, not a small portion of it. So I would urge you um, to support the Warrior proposal. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Chris Bogenry, V-O-G-E-N-R-I-E-F. First, I'd like to thank the commission uh, for our, allowing our community to get put into this position. This competition is great. It really is. I'm a local commercial real estate broker. My income depends solely on the health of the local economy. So I'm extremely motivated to choose the proposal that best improves the health of our local economy. The fierceness of this competition is driven solely by the 10 to $20 million of projected annual profits available to the winner. Sioux City has tasted what it's like when huge profits pour into local companies like Gateway Computers and Terra Chemicals. In the past 15 years, Sioux City has also seen the loss of those companies, Gateway and Terra, and their profits and it's a devastating loss. In their place, we've seen the addition of over a million square feet of call centers in this town that pay about $9 an hour. As the profits leave, Sioux City becomes more like China, where corporations take advantage of their cheap labor, they extract the profits, and they take them to their home cities. In my opinion, casinos do the same thing. They take money from our citizens, they ship the profits off to cities like Las Vegas or Philadelphia, and to me this is the opposite of economic development. Some would argue that casinos do more bad than good for a community. If the state of Iowa is going to grant a license to a casino corporation to extract money from our community, then I would at least ask the state of Iowa to allow our community to retain the profits. Ho-Chunk Inc. has the ability to become Sioux City's next gateway computers or Terra Chemicals, and they won't move to California or be bought out by a Chicago corporation. They're here to stay. If we allow Ho-Chunk to retain over $10 million or more in annual profits, we would allow them to multiply those profits many times over by the creation and the acquisition of new companies. Ho-Chunk's mission is economic development, and they have the potential to create more jobs than any casino project ever will. This is Iowa's chance to leverage casinos as true economic development tools. This is Iowa's chance to show that casinos can create more good than bad for a community. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Gina Gooseman, G-O-O-S-M-A-N-N. -N. We need warrior in the heart of downtown Sioux City. I'm a local attorney. I own the Gooseman Law Firm, and I employ nine young professionals here in Sioux City, Iowa. I recently restored a historic building myself about a year ago in downtown Sioux City, and this is our chance to have other heart of Sioux City investment with local executives, local decision makers, led by a brilliant entrepreneur. This is the only one that keeps the profits local and the decision makers here in Sioux City. Sioux City once had a very vibrant, bustling downtown, and that's never been here in my lifetime. But this is our opportunity to have that once again. We need the warrior in the heart of downtown Sioux City. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, good afternoon, and good afternoon to all the Sioux Cityans here. It's good to see so many out. My name is Frank Lemire, L-A-M-E-R-E. -E. I am from South Sioux City, and I'm a member of the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. I do not speak for the Winnebago Tribe. Chairman Blackhawk does that. I do not speak for Ho-Chunk, Inc. Uh, Lance Morgan does that. I don't even speak for my own family. My wife does that. <laughs> but <laughs> I wanted to uh, share with you, Mr. Chairman, my strong support for the Warrior Project. I've heard much discussed here today among the many interests, and I feel, and I try to understand each and every one of them, there was a question earlier about jobs, and that concerns me greatly. But I'm going to take a great leap and say that Ho-Chunk would probably be amenable to looking at those should there be a loss of jobs in this community, that they would be the first you know, to consider hiring any individuals. That's just the way we are as Winnebago people. The Ho-Chunk uh, people, the Winnebago people have been here for 150 years, Mr. Chairman, and I expect that we will pretty much be here forever. One of the things we do as Winnebago people, we always consider and work for the generations to come. A uh, little has been said about that today, but I want to speak to that because as we speak, I proudly announced that uh, my daughter is getting out of class at Creighton University, and she's going to take a short uh, ride across town, and she's going to go to work at Ho-Chunk, their offices uh, in Bellevue. Uh, she is a summer intern, and they have employed her for the past couple of summers, and about one year from now, we'll be looking forward to graduation. And we think about the generations to come, and I have a strong feeling that when she graduates, she's going to consider doing some things for Ho-Chunk, Inc., perhaps in Bellevue, perhaps in Winnebago, perhaps in Sioux City. We are worried about the generations to come, all of us, native and non-native, and we've not spoken to that very much. Mr. Chairman, I have strong, I urge this commission to do what they can and support this warrior project. It's good for all of us. We appreciate one another. We live together. There's not enough of us to not get along. And we want to get through this troubled time we've had in our community. And I think Ho-Chunk can take us there. Support the warrior project, please. Thank you.
That's correct, under option. Was there any private or any public speech in MC? I can't remember any other than that. No, we will not be requiring any kind of closures or, or vacations of streets. Phase two, the, um, what will trigger? That's a great question. Uh, it's really going to be market driven. Uh, right now, the Sioux City Hotel in, uh, market is running around 50%, 51% occupancy. Obviously, with our property that we have right now, we'll be removing some of that inventory out of the market with the removal of the Holiday Inn as well as the Ramada. Uh, and so hopefully that'll stabilize the inventory. Uh, we'll continue, obviously, our partnerships with the current hoteliers that we, we, put, we put customers in. And then once we see the stabilization of the marketplace, then that'll trigger our build. That's correct. And is there anything else that you're going to, even with that, I think you see a little more high amount. And you know, maybe it's just probably just how you allocate your line items. But mm -hmm. is there any other special in that category? I'm, I'm, I'm quarterbacking today. Is, you know, sometimes I'm going to pass the ball, sometimes I'm going to run, run the line. So right now I'm going to pass the ball over to our attorneys. Um, on that matter, I know the big, I mean, the big part of it is the twenty million dollar license fee, and we're accounting for that in that item. Is that it? Okay. So there's nothing else, oh, but we can also, but we can certainly, not that we're aware of, but if there's anything else that we that we'll take a re look at that, and if there's anything else significant, we'll get it back to the commission. I'll get back to the commission on that. Once again, um, market, market conditions, some of that is going to be gaming expansion, uh, expanding the gaming floor based on customer demand. So we already have, you know, we're allocating 750, mach 750 machines in the initial phase for both properties. We will do initial build outs uh, of, our, of our actual structures to accommodate additional gaming positions should the market demand. And the hotel is part of the state of Vermont on that? In the county location, correct. We appreciate that, and I'm actually going to turn that over to Doug because there is one one matter that we'd like to clarify. I, I believe there was one comment that criticized Harvey Siegelman and Mike Lipsman's uh, study, economic study, specifically related to the impact of TIF on school districts. And I wanted to make certain you were aware of the fact that there are there are three levies in addition to the operating levy that school districts have, playgrounds and debt service and management levies that are all based on property taxes and there no, there's no state offset. So in part, the gentleman was correct when he said that, that our number was incorrect because the number is actually larger. The actual impact on the local districts of that TIF, as I recall, is $6 million higher on Hard Rock and uh, $9 million higher for uh, the Warrior. But because of the 540 uniform levy, and Jeff is probably familiar with this in the school aid formula, the state picks up a portion of that because the, you have a so, certain amount for per pupil spending. 
And so it'll actually cost the state an additional $6 million for the one project and $9 million for the other. But the state does not, with the uniform levy, pick up the offsets for the other levies that the, that the districts have that are solely reliant upon property taxes. So we stand by our numbers, and our numbers were net of that state offset. But you should be aware, so we included that, but you should be aware that their proposals will actually cost the state more money to make up some of that difference. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I'd just like to once again thank you for um, your patience today, both at the site visits and um, for a long day. And on behalf of Penn National and the, our local team members, um, we're very grateful for the time that you've spent with us. Thanks again. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think maybe similarly we'll just kind of confirm that as far as all of your, um, the land options, et cetera, that's all under control. You've got that all locked up. Right. All the private parcels are under option. Uh, the public parcels are under the agreement with the city. We do require the vacation of Water Street, and we would like the vacation of Pearl Street to occur. Yes. And I guess specifically on the debt financing, could you just briefly what's different on the debt financing from other projects you have? Sure. We received a, uh, a commitment um, from Peninsula Pacific uh, relative to providing uh, debt financing. And effectively, it's, it's a trade out. So our original uh, summit financing uh, package provided for a commitment of $90 million. It had a conversion to equity related to warrants subject to the approval of the commission. Um, as a result of the financing markets and our ability to uh, continue to always uh, look to evolve the financing, which is natural in a project like this, uh, we were able to get the commitment from Peninsula Pacific, which has allowed us to reduce our, our overall borrowing costs significantly. So Peninsula Pacific would be uh, along with Summit on, on the debt financing. Has there been changes on the funding conditions on the debt financing? Actually, with the uh, evolution of the financing, the one nice part about um, Peninsula Pacific's commitment is it, it effectively there, there were contingencies uh, in the initial commitment, and the conti contingencies uh, that would have prevented us or, or slowed down the ability to begin construction have been removed. So. Uh, if we're lucky enough to get selected, we'll be able to start construction immediately. So have you provided a copy of the changes in the... I believe we, we've provided the, uh, the commitment from Peninsula Pacific, yes. But as far as the contingencies removed on the debt side? What, what it uh, effectively allows, we can, we can provide an update to that. What it effect... I think maybe just that's a difference between on the summit side. On the summit side, yeah. Oh, on the summit side, we have... Um, the summit contingencies have not been removed at this point. However, uh, a lot of them are just normal with respect to having a, uh, effectively a construction contract being a, a awarded the, the license. Uh, Peninsula Pacific's financing is going to allow us to begin, and, and as we get the construction contract completed, as the, the license is awarded, uh, then we can begin to draw on the summit financing. Okay, that's what I just that's what I was talking about on the funding conditions on the summit side. Okay. They're currently in the summit commitment. They are. Um, we can update the commission with where summit stands on those uh, position with that with the uh, um, with the addition of Peninsula Pacific. Um, Peninsula Pacific is going to allow us to commence the construction, and uh, summit's going to be comfortable. And I, again, I'll, I'll I'll update the commission with where we stand with summit. So if you are granted the license, construction would commence immediately. immediately. Yes. Yeah, we're going to be in a position, and we've begun the design process. Um, 
we're very excited for the opportunity, which is why we look to, again, continue to evolve the financing to put us in a position where we can start immediately. And in, in the event we're selected, we're gonna close on the land, we're gonna begin the construction process, and the goal would be to complete construction by July of 2014. I think there's a, uh, a little bit of a, a tightrope walk there because with respect to committing to any of the current employees' um, employment, I think there's a potential for action by Penn from a litigation standpoint. So I can't come out and say, I can't make any commitments to the current employees. I'll tell you that we're looking for great employees who are energized, who are um, very experienced in the guest service uh, business, the guest service aspects of a gaming enterprise. So that experience is gonna weigh heavily in the decision of, of who we hire.